Spend $700 and get a bad typo. Spend $700 and get a bad AI program. And spend $1,600 and you've got a dead GPU. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Monday, November 13th, 2023. Uh, I do apologize. I am getting over some form of sickness that hit me on Friday like a truck. This is my first time out of bed all weekend. So I finished Spider-Man Miles Morales. It was the first time I got to play that game. I enjoyed it. Oh, but a lot of people aren't enjoying the fact that they spent a lot of money on a motherboard of the Asus ROG Maximus Z790 Hero Evangelion Edition, or should I say Evangelion, Evangelion, because that is exactly what is printed on the motherboard. And you can see it right there. As people have started to get their retail units, it's only in one spot on the VRM heatsink that you can kind of see the Evangelion misprint that's right there. But it turns out that this has been in all of their promotional materials. It's been in all of their unboxing videos. It's been everywhere that this motherboard has seen the light of day. This misprint has been there. Spelling the name of the series wrong, obviously, is a big oopsie doopsie, especially when it is this much money that has gone into such a motherboard, especially if you're likely building out something like the Evangelion entire system that's over here. This is a continuation of the first Evangelion series that Asus did that was wildly successful. I think this might sour a little people or they won't care at all because it's in a place that's going to get blocked by like if you have a 120 mil fan you can see you can't even see where the typo would be because it'd be right there and that's not happening so let me know is this a big deal to you does that sort of typo hurt you i know one of the typos that we've seen recently one of the chairs that i was sitting in in hot news for the longest time said legendary instead of legendary they added an extra letter it's kind of funny but you cover it up with the lumbar pillow and it wasn't such a huge deal and also what wasn't a huge deal was twitch's hype chat nobody wanted it and or used it which is why twitch is shutting it down just after five months. So this thing launched in June of this year, kind of as a Twitch alternative to Super Chat, which you can predominantly find on YouTube's live streaming service where you spend money and then your comment is the top elevated one, depending on how much money you spent. We've seen a few hype chats over on our Twitch stream, but they haven't seemed to be fully grasped and Twitch saying that based on the community's feedback, they decided to deprecate hype chat and invest more into cheerings and bits going forward, which makes a lot of sense, especially since Twitch currently has a hype chat challenge going on and all that you get credit for in the hype challenge are subs and bits with no hype chat being announced at all. However, if you want to come watch our Twitch stream, you're more than welcome to do so as you're watching this. Reese should be live if you're watching hot news as it's coming out. This Friday, we're going to be drawing the winner for this beefy hunk and chunk of a PC. We did a video about this yesterday on our dedicated sponsored video of the height Y70 touch, which you can watch right up there. But that thing's got a 14700K and RTX 4090 Galaxy Hydro 360 mil liquid cooler in the height Y70 touch. We're going to be drawing the winner for that on Friday, but you earn points into the giveaway by watching the Twitch stream. So come watch Reese stream whatever he's streaming as of the time of the video is being released. But while Twitch is getting rid of hype chat, Qualcomm is getting rid of satellite texting because they found out that none of the smartphone manufacturers that they partner with are interested in using it. This was supposed to be their way of competing with Apple's SOS feature, which connected to satellites in order to give you some sort of remote option in case you weren't near any cellular signal. Smartphone makers have indicated a preference towards standard based solutions and so Qualcomm Snapdragon satellite is being deprecated as well but thankfully I don't think we have to deprecate UFD deals Reese gets to stay on board for right now happy Monday everyone welcome back to UFD deals bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet and hey hopefully these deals get you started off right this week because we have things like this Rehisk 15.6 inch 1080p 60 hertz IPS portable monitor I am the biggest fan of portable monitors I have one mounted vertically right below the camera there so I can see everything it's good stuff you can pick this one up for only $74.99 making it $120 $25 off. But the next up, we have the Samsung 980 Pro NVMe M.2 SSD going for only $119.99 for the two terabyte version, making it $60 off. And then we have the Sony WH-1000XM4 wireless noise canceling headphones. I use these as my personal daily drivers. They are phenomenal and I cannot recommend them enough. You can pick up a refurbished one for only $169.99, which is an incredible deal. Remember friends, refurbished headphones, yes, refurbished in-ears, no. And then last but not least, we have this HP Omen 27 inch 1440p 240 hertz HDR IPS gaming monitor going for only $299.99 making $130 off for honestly one of the sweet spots you can get for gaming monitors. And with that the deals are done you can find these and more linked in the video description down below. I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. All right Reese I got two bad deals for you buddy. Number one is the Humane AI pin which is just a piece of tech that got launched last week and announced finally showed off and it is every bit of Silicon Valley 
misunderstanding the average human as much as I could possibly find. So in case you wanna know what this bad boy is, let me tell you the price, it's 700 bucks. Now take a look at that. Do you think that thing's worth $700? Well, it's got a lot of features packed into it and it's supposed to connect to AI services via a T-Mobile network. Additionally, it has a Snapdragon processor. It's got a built-in camera for 13 megapixel photos, can capture videos, not right now, but after a software update. Additionally, it actually has a projector to project things onto your hand. and the whole whole point of this entire thing allegedly is to just remove you interfacing with your phone in case you want to do things with AI. So a lot of the features that they showed off are basic things that your phone can do. You just don't have to operate with a phone screen. But additionally, doing things like holding up nuts and asking it scan these nuts and then it tells you how much protein is in these nuts. But that obviously does not work for all food. You cannot tell how many calories or protein is in a given set of food just by taking a picture of it because how it's prepared and how it's seasoned. And there's so many things that go into preparation of food that you can't just look at it and know exactly anything about it. Um, So that's a little weird. And in their demonstration of like what it could do for you, it had the typical AI hallucinations about lying about a solar eclipse. But the idea is that it's supposed to give you AI in the palm of your hand and that mini projector, as you can see right there, can tell you somebody's calling you. But don't worry, that $700 price point also comes with a $24 monthly fee, which gets you a phone number and data data coverage so that you don't need a phone anymore. This reeks of just so many things. The reason a lot of people are hyping this up is because it's led by two former Apple employees, which makes you think that it's honorable and can be vetted. But need I remind you, number one, that a former Apple employee was responsible for one of the worst retail flubs in human history in the modern era with JCPenney, trying to redesign how JCPenney worked to be cool and hip. And then they found out that nobody goes to JCPenney if they're cool and hip, you only go for the sales and getting rid of those. Anyways, Apple employees are not infallible. Additionally, you have company heads like Meg Whitman and Jeffrey Katzenberg trying to lead a company like Quibi because it's cool and you can it, you just rotate your phone and it's video in both ways. That's exactly what the humane AI pin screams to me. This is a problem that only Silicon Valley bros have where they are like, well, what if we could interact with AI without having to use our phone? That would be so wonderful. Well, most people could just use their freaking phone. It's really not a problem. I'm sorry if I'm a little salty about this, but I deem humane to be my next Quibi. This company is going to die in the next two years or they're going to get bought out by somebody else to absorb talent. This, this company and this product will not be successful because they are number one, if you watch the launch video, not enthusiastic about it themselves. But then number two, they're just unaware of what it takes to get a product like this to actually hit mass market. And just because you think an idea is good, doesn't mean that it actually should be sold. It's engineering, amazing. What they put in there, really cool to see how they made that product, but that doesn't mean it's gonna be commercially successful. And I am now gonna be counting down the days until Humane AI uh, falls down. But I told Reese that I had two bad deals for them. Humane AI pin was the first one, and next is the Tesla Cybertruck, because it turns out if you get one of the first ones at the delivery event that's taking place later this month on November 30th, well then, if you sell it, Tesla may sue you. This is specifically for the low VIN number versions of the Cybertruck in the Tesla Motor Vehicle Purchase Agreement under the no reseller section, essentially saying that if you sell it for a reason that Tesla deems invalid, you have to actually write to Tesla to get their approval in order to sell it. If you do it for non-valid Tesla reasons, they could sue you for up to $50,000 or the value received as consideration for the sale or transfer, whichever is greater. And this is likely in anticipation of the fact that they will not have a whole lot out there and they don't want people flipping this so they sell it to their competitors or you know they just want people to actually hold on to these things. This is not an unprecedented move. You've had things like the Ford GT have these types of contracts. John Cena actually got sued by Ford, but they couldn't see him. So they dropped the lawsuit. Additionally, Ferrari does this type of stuff. The Hummer EV, which is a much more expensive class of vehicle, also did this type of things. It's just weird to see such a low value vehicle be placed in the same echelons of like, hey, no, you actually have to hold on to this vehicle. It's intriguing. I don't know if this is necessarily a problem. I get why Tesla's doing it. Let me know what you think of Tesla potentially suing their customers down below in the comments. But the customers of the Cybertruck now may know what exactly they're getting 
thing. We have the leak specs of the Cybertruck with its overall length, its towing capacity being 11,000 pounds, and the fact that it will have outlets in the rear, none in the front, a 220 volt and two 110 volts in the back outlet. Additionally, that 11,000 pounds of towing is less than Tesla quoted originally when they launched their Cybertruck at 14,000 pounds. So we'll have to see if there's a higher trim level that hits that 14,000 or Tesla was lying, which couldn't possibly be the truth. And now let's talk about another company that's known for potentially fudging the reality in order to meet their own desires and methods. And that's Nvidia, especially specifically when it comes to the power connector on the RTX 4090. We've talked about this at length ever since this card launched over a year ago. It has been hotly contested because these cards are physically dying from the power connectors melting. But now it turns out that maybe the amount of cards dying is a lot higher than Nvidia even positioned because Northridge Fix has a video out over on their YouTube channel where they discuss the 4090 melted connectors and they are estimating that they are getting between 20 to 25 4090s a week to repair, specifically on the power connector side of it. So much so that they had to buy their own filtration mask in order to continue working on it because the volume and the bad condition of the connectors that had to be desoldered and resoldered was just too high. Nvidia said about a year ago that it was only aware of 50 cases of these 4090 melted connectors, but if there's 20 to 25 going to a single repair shop every single week, which puts it at roughly 100 a month, and there's multiple repair shops that are probably likely dealing with this 4090 issue, it seems like this is a little bit beyond what Nvidia let it on to be. Let me know if you've had your hands on a 4090, you know a friend who has, have they experienced the melting? I personally have come across several 4090s at this point and have not had any issues, but I'm going to keep my eyes open and uh, kind of just wait for the day that it happens. Northbridge Fix does say it's now safe to say that the 4090 melted connector is not a user problem. We discussed this many times in the past, but I want to mention one last time that this is not a user error, specifically putting it on Nvidia and the design of the power connector, that it is the biggest problem on their side. Oh, but it would be a big problem if I skipped comment response. So let's get on into it. Tear down Dan saying an LCD needs enough power to operate its entire backlight at max brightness. The instant there is one bright pixel with a given dimming zone while an OLED only needs to pump individual bright pixels. As such, an OLED with higher peak brightness doesn't necessarily need more power as long as the bright bits only account for a fraction of the total screen space. Many HDR monitors and TVs cannot handle peak brightness across more than 20% of the screen. If that much of your screen is peak white, you're basically staring at a flashlight. This is in regards to me talking about how the OLED screen might need more power to drive the higher brightness, which this this could account for some of it, but additionally, the OLED screen is also running at a higher refresh rate at 50% at higher. So it would also require more juice in order to continue that. I'm not saying that it needed to be completely different, but all of the teardown videos that I've watched have refused to take the screen off because they need to save it for other reviews. And I'm still waiting to see, is the physical connector actually the same? If you've seen a video that actually shows the Steam OLED's connector for the screen, link it to me and I'd, I'd appreciate it. Vibe Fox saying you guys should set up some communication between yourselves and the sweet deals. Have Reese answer a question while he does the deal. I think it would make you guys feel way more connected. Uh, we did that when we first launched UFD deals and it doesn't work. There's just too much disconnect. It's not uh, it's not something we're gonna continue to do. Whatever you say fam says, I think he missed an H is an underrated joke. That was uh, with regards to me talking about Omegle with the owner of Omegle saying that the world has gotten more ornery. And I said, I think he missed an H which would make it pronounce hornery, which thank you for calling out the joke. Many people missed it, but also it turns out uh, as an update to the Omegle story that there is a lawsuit for some sexual abuse stuff that happened on the website, which is why it had to close down. So not a huge shock there. It's very unfortunate. Baracia saying there's one difference in the Fortnite part. It's Apple's fault that you can't play it on iOS, whatever, but it is Epic's greed that you can't play it on the Steam Deck and therefore Linux. They deliberately keep the anti-cheat support disabled for Wine Proton, even though they've announced the Proton support for EAC themselves. I would honestly argue that both of those are Epic's greeds because it's not Apple's fault that you can't play it on iOS. It was Epic's fault that you can't because they tried to subvert Apple's rules. And then when Apple said, hey, you can't do that, they said, yes, we can. And then Apple was like, okay, just not here. And then Epic took them to court. Apple won and Epic has to deal with the consequences. Epic is choosing not to be on iOS, macOS, whatever. That is Epic's greed for trying to get more than a 70% cut. There's no other way to slice it, whether or not that 30% cut that Apple takes is an entirely different conversation, but it was Epic's desire for more money 
that got them taken off Apple's Play Store, which is the same thing that's happening with everything else. And Evo Fernandez says, now I feel the pain at people getting unemployed. Yesterday I had a company reunion where I work and they announced that it's going to shut down. I was never unemployed or fired from anywhere I worked at. We were living in a very bad moment. I'm sorry to hear that friend. And then we'll leave with Pixel Boy saying, I just want the Steam Deck OLED available in Australia and New Zealand. It only took the Valve Index two years to become available here officially, but that was the only through one retailer, not Valve. Just want one, man. Yeah, it was kind of the same in South Africa where it took forever for the Steam Deck to get imported via a company, but then even then it wasn't through Valve officially and the pricing was outrageous to the point when the ROG Ally got launched because Asus is actually in South Africa. The pricing on the Ally is the same as the price on the Steam Deck, even the lowest end Steam Deck, because Asus isn't dealing with like third party markup and creating a whole weird situation. So a lot of people bought an Ally in South Africa because the Steam Deck was like 15, 16,000 Rand for no good flipping reason. And I'm not gonna continue this episode of Hot News for any freaking reason, because I'm sick. I'm gonna go get more rest. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you back here for more of the hottest tech news tomorrow.